Yeah, we're rolling. Star Wars, X-Men, movies with friends. We got a lot to say. Who the fuck will listen anyway? All things pop. All things pop. All things pop. Your mama's vagina, we popped. Like, I went into The Last Ninja Turtles when it came out knowing I wasn't going to love it. Like, I got that. I knew that it wasn't for me. It was for a younger generation. But I still was excited and had hope. And then I was disappointed to the to a level that I didn't know I could be disappointed in something. I was, dis- I was excited enough to see it because I liked the Ninja Turtles. Like, I, Ninja Turtles were my first introduction to comics, my first introduction to action figures. Right. Like, besides whatever you get as, like, a small child. But at, like, three years old, my dad bought me Ninja Turtles and co- the Ninja Turtles comics for my birthday. Uh-huh. Like, I turned three and I remember that at between three and four, I had this. There was this book called Donatello and the Magic Crystal. <laughs> yeah, they did this four series of books where they were basically focus on one of each of the turtles uh-huh. and go on like some non turtle adventure. So Donatello and the Magic Crystal, he found a crystal that if you attached it to a pencil, you could draw and things would come to life. How oh, cool! So he drew the, like all these like scenarios and had to deal with them. Scenarios? Is there a difference? To me, there is. All right. With that, hey, everyone, we're going to be talking about Human X Design today on the All Things Popped. And before we get into it, as we were trying to do now, we're going to do a little big shout out. A little big shout out, like the Little Big Planet, the video game we all played back in the day that now I've forgotten all about to this moment. But we're going to do a shout out to John Nolan. John Nolan just uh, recently subscribed to our newsletter mm. at www, which stands for World Wide Web, I've been told. I've, I hear that. Dot Last Chance Podcast Network dot com. John Nolan plays in a band here in North Carolina which is pretty rad. They're really cool. You should check them out. They're called Into Oceans. Um, yeah, but here's just a shout out to our boy, John Nolan. Thanks for checking us out. Thanks for subscribing. Right, and if you guys want to do it too, just go ahead and subscribe and we'll shout you out in the future. Or yeah. Send us again, a- yeah, again, you just hop down to www.lastchancepodcastnetwork.com. Scroll down to the bottom and uh, there should be a subscribe to our newsletter. Um, and when you do, shoot us an idea, you know, for any of our podcasts even. If you have something that, you know, you think the guys and I'll have what he's having, you know, should drink or try out. If you've got some science or some some tech or some pop culture that we should talk about here at All Things Popped. If you um, got a movie you want us yeah, to watch, let us know. If you got a movie that, you th- that you're not sure you want to watch, and just <laughs> so you don't have to, we'll do it for you. Or you can watch it along with us. We're doing the Lord's um, work. Yeah, we're doing the Lord's work. That's right. You know. So anyways, as for mentioned before, the human X design, we're going to talk about modification with technology of the human body. Now, Mikey, I love the idea of this. Like, I am 100% ready to be completely cyborg. You could right now, if you could take my brain or my consciousness out of me. I would. Well, I appreciate that. And well, I would leave it somewhere. <laughs> oh, like, like one of those uh, spirits in Zelda, you just put it in a bottle. Yeah, like a little Poe. <laughs> uh, but if I could do that right now, if you could take out my consciousness without me like kind of dying unofficially where I wouldn't know this happened. But if you could like, if I could be seamlessly uploaded to a robot version of me that I don't want to lose feeling. Like I like the idea of being able to feel stuff, especially emotions. But it, as long as I could do that seamlessly, I 100% would. I see no reason not to if I could have a robot version of me that was better, stronger, faster, could live longer. It doesn't matter. I mean, I'm, I'm not opposed to it or against it. I mean, obviously the huge controversy is at what point does one become no longer human? You know what I mean? Like, right. But the, the same point, like we always talk about human evolution and what if this is the next phase in human evolution? I 100% you know I mean? agree. Like we have evolved to the point to where we've created a technology that allows us to do a certain thing. All right. We have the awareness and the capability to do all of this stuff. And we have not only that, but the willingness and desire to do it. It's like, is that not in some way part of evolution? Mm -hmm. You know, but you've got the other people like, you know, don't if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Well, they use the word ain't in the middle of a sentence. They don't know what they're talking about. Frankly, it is broke. We are we are broken. You know, what I mean, like we are like mortal, if you will. Yeah, like our brains you know? are smarter than our body is. We can conceive of things in a way that our bodies cannot keep up with. And so that's why we need to be able to upgrade this motherfucking shit. Let's get on to the matrix. I'm okay with it. But one of the things I want to kind of talk about that you touched on a second ago is the fact that when do we become not human anymore? When is it yeah. too far? And it's there's an old like way of thinking. It's a it's not a proverb. I'm really bad at this kind of things. An but adage? It's an adage. Like if you had, and it's I'm just going to 
use the same one that I heard, but if you had a table and on this table, one of the legs broke. And so you went ahead and had to replace it with a new leg for the table, whatever. 10 years go by, another leg breaks off, such and so forth. You keep replacing parts of this le- of this table. And eventually it comes to the point where there's no original parts of that table. You're still going to consider that the same table. That still is the table that you originally got. It's just evolved over the years. So what I would say, so my caveat to that, all right, would be me, you know, so, all right, so... I'll use, you know, the analogy of a guitar because I've definitely thought about buying, you know, like an inexpensive guitar, you know, so say I want, you know, this style of guitar, but I don't want to spend a lot of money on it right away. So I'm going to buy the cheap one and I'll upgrade some parts. You know, mm-hmm. and once I've upgraded the parts, they'll then switch out. So say I'll do the electronics first and then, you know, I'll get a nicer neck and then I'll get a nicer body. And then at some point, not any part of this guitar is the original. Is the original. It's just I got parts that would work on what I ultimately wanted and was able to build an upgrade through time. Right. All right. So if I change the appearance of it or change the functionality of it, it would then become not the same table. So say you start off with like a round table with four legs. But then at some point you decide like, you know, through your table needs change, you know, (laughs) like, oh, well now I need a slightly larger table that's square. So it's like you've replaced all the legs and then like the top's messed up and you're like, well, I might as well get a longer rectangular table. At that point, I would stop looking at it as the same table. Well, but up until that last point where you switched out one last little piece, you still considered it the same table? Yes. Well, can our brains not be that last little piece that stays? Yeah, and and that's fine. But now there's also the whole talk of the singularity, which isn't quite what we're getting into. But I feel like that's I feel like that's what inevitably like this will lead on to is, you know, like Chappie, like being able to upload your consciousness into a machine. Mm -hmm. You know, at that point, I don't know, because now you're talking about artificial intelligence. And is it artificial if it came from, you know, right? Is it a code that writes the script that official intelligence? Yeah, exactly. It's very it's all very like strange and interesting well and, and so I, I this is going to be like waters that are going to be hard to navigate here and i'm not trying to be offensive in any way when i say this i so just know that going into it but when someone goes through a trauma and they lose a leg right and they get a fake leg they're still considered human or let's say another person goes through another trauma where he gets all of his limbs like blown off or lose them to cancer or whatever like they're still human they replace their heart with something else just to keep it pumping they replace their their livers with other things they have to dialysis to keep going they are still considered human they're still considered that person even though they are less human at that point than they were to begin with and then what if it gets to the way, what if it gets to the point where someone gets brain trauma and they become a different person or they become like mentally handicapped are they still not that same person they are. They just don't have the same faculties to do the same processes of thought. So I think that's where it becomes a gray area. How do we know that we have ultimately changed who we are? I think we should have it should be a percentage base. You know I mean, once you've crossed hard said percentage, hard numbers, okay. it's the only way to set it in stone. Once you cross whatever, you know, science decides, mm-hmm. you know, like 75 percent, you know, artificial. You know, I mean, obviously, I guess the thing is like an android, right, is mm-hmm. <clears throat> a Opposite. robot. With that, human parts. That ha- well, no, an an- that's a cyborg. Like a cyborg is a cybernetic human. Okay. Whereas an android is like C-3PO. Oh, you know? yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, no, wait, that's, am I backwards? So, yeah, the difference between uh, android and a cyborg, I looked it up, and robots are purely mechanical and rarely designed to pass for a human. Cyborg are bionic and with organic and inorganic components. Okay. Androids are purely mechanical. Okay, so yeah, I was... They may have synthetic skin, but they are programmed to think like a human, but they are not. Okay, so I was right. Like, an android is a robot that comes across as a human. A robot is a machine that does a job. And then a cyborg is 50-50. Right. You know? And so it's like, at that point, I, I feel like it's kind of any anybody who is equally robotic... And human or equally, you know, bionic, I guess you could call it. Right. Like, I feel like then transcend into a new subspecies of human, you know. Well, okay. so when you think about the brain and we kind of zoom into what that is, that is literally just electronical fires in the neurons. yeah. Yeah. And so in the end, that is almost mechanical. That is electrical pulses. Well, we've been I mean, we've been we've been playing God like ever since we created computers. I mean, once we started creating like hardwired circuit boards that can do things and function where we used to have to have human interaction. You know what I mean? Like that is essentially like, you know, like relays and, you know, transistors and all that stuff are essentially electro electrical components modeled after theoretically what the brain can do. Like, I mean, I'm obviously not a scientist by any means, you know, hold on this whole time. Yeah. 
I so okay. So I may I have. Wasn't I wasn't supposed have, to put that cucumber in my butt. No, I, th- that was for that was. I said it was an experiment. I didn't say it was uh, science. I thought you said it. It was experimented. No, uh. that would have been tingly, and it didn't tingle. You uh, said okay. Well, I guess okay. we learned something. We You're do. Right. The more you know. But yeah, like you know, I'm so obviously like I'm not a you know an official thinker on this matter but wait to me- you're not <laughs> all right so again, again i may have i may have led you into you know false pretenses when you had me on this podcast yeah um i just really wanted to be a part of it sure um totally not a scientist <laughs> all right. so going forward keep that in mind but yeah like i don't know i just it's it's such a gray area it's like i feel like anything i say you know or anything anyone says it's like you don't know what's right is right or what's wrong you know it's like i want to say that if you are more than half like cyborg or right. you know robot or anything synthetic if you will uh-huh. right i kind of feel like you can't consider yourself fully human now prosthetic legs things of that nature are completely different you know that's a prosthetic that's one limb sometimes multiple limbs dialysis again i feel it's a different story but once you have things that are functioning on their own what about a pig heart going into a human? That's something they can do to continue like sustaining life. Yeah, but so it's still organic, I guess. <laughs> no, because again, it's one, you know, it's a small percentage. Can you become the Ninja Turtles guy? <laughs> Bebop. <laughs> oh, God. Or wait, it was that Rocks. Bebop was the... Rhino? I think, no, I think Bebop was the, the warthog. I feel like... And then Rocksteady was the rhino. Yeah, that feels yeah. right. Because rhino, rock, R. I yeah. feel like that makes sense. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know. Bebop had a mohawk, so he could rock pretty hard. Damn. He could right. rock pretty steady. He had the little nose piercing? He did. <laughs> <laughs> little, what, what are those called? Septum piercings? Uh-huh. Yeah. Doorknobs. <laughs> oh, God. Door knockers. <laughs> Fart knocker. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I think it's always a big gray area for the ethics of this and kind of what's right or wrong, where we should be able to go. And uh, there's actually a company out there called HumanX Design. It's actually more of a conference, but they're looking in to push this kind of thought and technology forward and bringing in a bunch of different scientists and people in the know about the general workings of how this would happen. And we're going to get to that right after the break. Stick with us. So I know you're enjoying whatever topic about stem cell research or the clones or something about VR, virtual reality, weirdness with porn. The really important thing that we need to talk about, though, is there are a bunch of other podcasts on the Last Chance Potty, Podcast Network. Podcast. Podcast. <laughs> that's that's because I use a, a, I don't know. I, I forgot what those things are called. I can't even. It's called a potty. Is it a potty? It's is a that, potty cast. What's, what's the thing you put on the toilet? I just have that on your couch right now. Uh, it's called a squatty potty. Oh, I got a squatty potty going on over here. Basically, we're over here on the squatty potty trying to tell you guys about a great show called LC <laughs> Does Your Scene. And what it's going to really revolve around is me shitting on floors, talking about bands that are coming through on tour, bands that are local to your scene, how your scene's doing, and what people around your scene are doing to make it better. You should totally check it out on Last Chance Podcast Network. I'm Joan. Clink, 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 <laughs> clink, 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 clink. Just be like, be like, bling, bling, bling. Come listen to Q to Q, where we talk <laughs> about dancing and singing. Clink, 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 clink. <laughs> like, and we're back. Uh, thanks for sticking with us. So right before the break, we talked about human X design uh, or human by design. And what that is, is it's basically a conference where they gathered top minds in the field of human modification, um, you know, cybernetics, things of that nature, just to kind of talk about the theories in what could be in our future in the ways of body modification um, and upgrading your limbs, as it were. And it was all brought to you by Square Enix, which is a video game developer, surprisingly enough. Yeah, um, video games. Huh? Yeah, video games. Don't get me started. Um, God damn it, Paul. Which I thought was really interesting. Um, I, I definitely remember coming across this concept a couple a couple months back and reading it thinking, you know, oh, wow, this is really interesting, blah, blah, blah. And then finding out it was tied to Deuce X, Mankind Divided, which is uh, the newest game coming out in that series, Do Sex. Is, is it about this sort of stuff? Yeah, so it's kind of interesting. It's basically like a cyberpunk-themed game. It's like a first-person like action role-playing game. Mm. Uh, they've got six of them. I believe this would be the sixth one. Um, that came out like 2002, I think. I played I played one or two of them. It's pretty interesting. It's basically, there's lots of like, you know, conspiracy theories, and there's lots of like, you know, like, oh, you're not human, you know, and basically like segregation and things like that. Mm. So it's pretty interesting. And Mankind Divided kind of seems to branch off that same theme. And so basically what happened is definitely in an effort to promote, but also in an effort to kind of, I think, bring awareness to the table. Square Enix got together uh, with an offshoot of CNN to broadcast. They also did it on Twitch, which is a game streaming channel and network. 
uh, for a lot of gamers and mm. stuff. They got together with all these media companies to put together this conference and actually gather, like I said, top scientific minds to kind of discuss this, like the future of it, what's possible now. Right. Uh, talk about the ethics. They had ethics people there as well, just to kind of talk about all the concepts leading up to this. And I think it's super, super fascinating. It all branches off what's considered augmentation. Yeah. And that's where you're changing what you are into a different version. And in this conference, they're kind of proposing... I mean, it's just basically the next step in plastic surgery. You know what I mean? Realistically. Well, they, they, they pose the question, do we own our bodies? And if we do, does that person have inalienable rights to augment without limits? Which I think is a great question. And again, I feel like, yes, you do. I feel like... I feel like you can do whatever you want to your body. If you want to go get, you know, a nose job, go get a nose job. If you want to go and get butt implants to make, you know, to make your jeans fit tighter because you're a guy with a flat ass. I'm listening. Your whole life. Oh, that kind of butt implant. Yeah, not no. the, not not the cucumber. Ah, okay. All right. Um, I, thought, I was about to say, like, I thought we already did that. I'm, yeah. I'm transhuman now. I got to cucumber in my butt. I'm right. augmented. Once again, that was experimenting, uh, not, a, not a science experiment. Got it. There's okay. nothing scientific, no grounds whatsoever. I got it. Should have um, sent the pictures to my mom then. That was a problem. No, I, like, I told you not to do that. <laughs> I like, was wondering why I've been getting cease and desist letters. <laughs> um, to me... I feel like you can do whatever you want. You know what I mean? Like people go and get plastic surgery. Sometimes they regret it. You know, obviously, like I've, there's there's tons of cases, you know, with celebrities who are right. like, oh, I should have never done this. Or Looking at you, Tara Reid. Oh, God. I mean, Mickey Rourke says, you know, like he regrets doing what he had done and so forth and so and on. And he wasn't talking about Iron Man 2? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Whiplash. <laughs> I swear to God, I thought that was Omega Red. I know. Like, I know. It just didn't make sense that it wasn't. And they never said he was or wasn't anything, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, to me, I feel like you can do whatever you want. People get plastic surgery. They get fake boobs. They get butt implants. They get nose jobs. You know, calf implants. You know, all these, like, ridiculous things. They just get to make baby them... cows put on their legs. Absolutely. Like, grafted yeah. to them. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Jessica Veal. But, sorry. I don't, know. I <laughs> well, don't know that she got anything done. I just. Because of Veal. Like, yeah. I get it. I get it. Clever. I like it. Yeah. I approve of that message. I approve. Well, they go on in this uh, kind of exactly what you're saying. They 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 separate into selective versus therapeutic augmentation. And they say for thousands of years, humans have sought to permanently modify their bodies with tattoos, piercing implants, pushing the boundaries of the human body. But now technologists seek to enhance the capability of human anatomy without pre-existing conditions, which, again, is what I agree. Like, if people get these tattoos, they think that's a better version of them, what they always wanted. Like, yeah. what's the difference between that and someone just, like, chopping off an arm and throwing on a robot? Well, I guess the difference is if you regret... I mean, and then again, the thing is, I feel like there's a counter to everything. Like, I was literally just about to say, like, you cut your arm off, you put on, you know, a bionic arm. At what point... You, you, you say, like, oh, well, what if it malfunctions? It's like, what if your regular arm malfunctions? My my dad has bone spurs and, like, a rotator right. cuff tear right now. He can't use his shoulder. That's all real stuff. That's all, like, flesh and bone and blood, right? The other question to me that I kind of randomly thought about when I was making that thing is at what point do, like, sports leagues need to change? You know, because it's oh. like you're going to have to have, you know, your standard, like, NBA and then mm -hmm. you're going to have to have your like BNBA for Bionic National Basketball Association. Well, this brings up the point of that one sprinter who had the fake legs. Remember? Oh yeah, those little I yeah, like I saw I saw someone running on the American Tobacco Trail with those uh, kind of like, yeah, they're like them. the blades, the little, I feel awful. Again, I mean no harm, but every time I see them, I think of the movie The Arrival with Charlie oh, yeah, Sheen. backwards knees. Yeah. They're fucking cool, man. Yeah. Like, it is incredible. I saw someone, it was a double amputee, you know, had those blades on, was running with I, what I'm assuming is a trainer, mm -hmm. but they were running, I was biking um, down the American Tobacco Trail, and they were running, and like, it was, it was impressive. It was like, yeah. you know, it was very, very cool. Right. Well, he was allowed to compete along with like people without this disability. And I think he won a lot of the, the competitions he was in. So that brings the question up. Like, was that, was that fair? If these modifications allowed him to be able to move at a faster pace. But I guess the question would be, he was probably a runner before this. Right. I mean, I guess. I don't but know. But I'm saying like, we, it's, we like to assume that he didn't lose his legs at some point in life and then start competing with these blades uh -huh. right away and had an advantage. Like he was probably right. training as a runner because you have to have some amount of training to be an Olympian. Right. right. And then something happened somewhere in his life, prosthetics. So I, I think you'd have to kind of look at his prowess as a runner before and after. Yeah. Well, you know? I want to, I would, this is what I want to do. I want to take a microwave and put it into my stomach. And I want to become a chef. And all you have to do is just throw shit in my stomach. And I'll just so like out. Bender from <laughs> Futurama. Yeah. Right. I've considered myself a chef. It'll be fine. Yeah. 
I mean, it's totally fine. Uh, you'd still have to prepare the food to just cook in the microwave, which I don't see why you'd have to have a microwave in your stomach to do so, <laughs> unless you're a hot pocket chef. I, I and love you it. You can just make them everywhere, and you you power it with like a potato that you plug into, and you use the electronics from the potato. Right. Well, that comes into like the RoboCop. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, obviously, some maybe whatever, but like they still kind of considered him human because his brain was still, even though they tried to block out like his consciousness, like he still had that. I think a future where we have people walking around with all they have is the stem of their brain and st- or the c- cerebellum of their brain like put into this robot body I would consider that human and I'd be again totally down last episode I talked about the Energizer Bunny and how I would love to cut out my spine and put it in a battery so yeah. I could just fucking go longer faster stronger I'm for that all the way you can't convince me otherwise unless I couldn't feel like if I couldn't feel my fingertips and stuff like that but I guess my question is that's where you get difference it's like so if you have fake hands but a real brain, all right, and your fake hands are, you know, you're hitting basically sensors that send electronic signal to your brain, which then get converted into feelings or senses, right? Mm-hmm. You know, at what point are you really feeling? You know what I mean? It's like if you have gloves on, like they always say like a condom, you lose all the feeling. Right. All right. So For the person you're with. <laughs> <laughs> well, but like they, that's what they say. It's like, you know, at that point, if you have synthetic arms, you know, that are covered in latex for skin or whatever it may be at this futuristic point, can you really feel? Or is it just, you know, triggering synapses and emotional brains re- recalling feeling? Well, that's exactly what it is, like in the human body already. It's just interpretations of the brain of what's happening. And with all that being said about the body and the brain interpreting the feelings that are happening with the synapses, it, let's just go to this future, whatever, 100 years from now, where people are modifying their body with these augmentations. Or Matt Damon's trying to get to the planet above. <laughs> right, or the moon. The, the, the moon. The, I never saw that movie. It's actually pretty good. Yeah, I've heard great things about it. I need to see it. But let's say we see that future where that's happening. Just imagine the hacking that's going to happen outside, like people going in and like tapping into what you are. Oh, yeah. It's like, like if you had if you had dudes like Elliot from Master, or Mr. Robot, mm-hmm. you know, like hacking into your body. Yeah, like it's a whole different like ball game. Like you won't even have to have like wars anymore. You can just like send out this electrical pulse. It'll EMPs, shut down, yeah. shut down everybody. And with that kind of same thought process... You then definitely would have the the revolution of like you know organic people you know right like they people rise who like, back up yeah people who fight against it and like children of men in a way that oh movie, yeah children Love of men that. fantastic movie mm-hmm. um, where you've got like this whole underground group of people that take to the sewers or something and like procreate just to keep like organic people alive <laughs> and instill the thought of like you know real is real kind of uh-huh. thing it'd be really cool and it'd be whatever, a cool future to live in for whatever reason rogues families down there yeah <laughs> Morlocks just hanging out. <laughs> And uh, the final final thing I'll say about it is, speaking of the hacking into it, they already have like the smart driverless cars and they've had hackers demonstrate that they can remotely access your car and shut it down on the highway where you lose control of steering, braking, everything. And so if that's already a thing that they can do right now with something like a car, just imagine once this technology is advanced, the hackers are going to always advance at the same rate, if not oh, more. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. And that's, that's, I guess my fear. It's like the more things that are electronic and digital, like the more susceptible they are to digital terrorism, if you will, Yeah. you know, and whether it's for wrong or right, you know, I mean, I know there's a lot of hackers out there for the better cause and there's right. also the probably anonymous bad. Disease. Yeah. And there's also probably bad hackers, you know, as well. It's just like you're literally inviting that. Um, Like I was watching a movie, a documentary called Indie Game, which basically details like these three indie game developers Mm -hmm. who uh, are making, you know, through the trials and tribulations of developing this game. Well, there's a second installment called Indie Game 2 Life After. And it's basically talking about their successes or lack of success or whatever in Uh this instance. I think there's a lot of success in this instance. (laughs) Um, But one, a game that I've been following and actually play called Super Meat Boy, uh, the actual programmer entered this kind of update that allowed people to enter in their own user-created levels. And it opened his world up. It it basically opened his database at home, like their server. Um, It left it open. And so we had a guy reach out to them that seemed like, hey, just so you know, like you've left your server very vulnerable. You've left your database and all your file library is very vulnerable. And he's like, I'm aware of that. It's the only way I could allow people to update user content. Huh. We're an independent game. You know, I assume that people are going to want to have fun with this. You know, I want it to be fun experience for everyone. You play all these user submitted levels and things like that using our mechanics. You know, I thought it'd be fun. And the guy was like, oh, well, you know, you should be 
you know, you should be more careful. Things like this could happen. And he like sent a link, you know, that was basically like trying to show. And the guy's like, I'm aware that this could happen. Yeah. I'm, I, I did it on purpose. I'm hoping for the betterment. I'm hoping for humans to not be assholes, basically. <laughs> and he clicks this link, and bam, it wipes out his entire thing, and basically called him out for being like a shitty programmer. And then he went and took their conversation and edited it to make him seem like this arrogant guy, huh. right? And so it's like he takes this conversation and basically says like, hey, just to let you know you're vulnerable. And he's like, I know, I did this on purpose. Shut up, basically, and edited oh, this wow. conversation with him. And then spams him on Reddit. And luckily he was able to get out of that, but now it's ruined it for everyone. It's yeah. like, so in a way it's like hacking is a weird power play. It's like, there's people who do it for good and try and like wipe out the KKK and try and wipe out all these like, you know, extremist groups and, yeah. you know, the Westboro Baptist church, like anonymous has taken on right. that. And I definitely think that that's for, for good. You know, it's, it's such a day you're, you're inviting such mystery and danger in with that kind of thing. Like, well, it's, it's cause people have a disconnect between the actions they're doing and the repercussions of how it affects absolutely. other people when it deals with the internet. That's how like, if you ever go through like the, the comment section of a YouTube video, oh, yeah. like it's just full of like the worst things you've ever read humans would ever say. And it just like makes you lose faith. Keyboard that, warriors, man. It's like anybody can say anything from like behind their keyboard. Right. But if you actually talk to that person, that may not be how they really feel, but it's thoughts that go on in their brain. And there's just like a disconnect. It's like, you don't, you just don't think about it. It's gonna affect someone like I probably think some terrible things when I'm driving it's like you can't help it just like a thought rushes through your head and no matter how much you're like I don't want to think that the thought of not thinking something makes you think it yeah. and so I understand that these people don't necessarily mean what they say but I think that's the thing with hacking is they don't think about the repercussions of what they're doing and how it's gonna affect other people and I think with that, it's a good place to end this episode for the day. Yeah. And uh, again, I want to thank everyone for listening to us. We're doing this two times a week. And if you know anyone out there who would be interested in a show like this about science and technology, be sure to shoot them our link. Uh, you can send them to our Facebook, which is Last Chance Podcast Network. You can go to our Twitter, which is at LC Podcast N-E-T-W-K. Or you can go to our Instagram, which is at LC Podcast Network, all spelled out. And as always, our home on the web is lastchancepodcastnetwork.com. Scroll to the bottom and you'll see subscribe to our newsletter. Go ahead and click that. And in the body, tell us some ideas for shows you'd like to talk about in the future, be it science or technology or shit. Go ahead and talk about some of the other shows on our network, such as I'll Have What He's Having. Tell us maybe a drink you'd like for them to partake in. We have a show called Netflix. If you got a movie you want me, Mikey, and John to talk about so you don't have to, go ahead and send that to us. And if you have a band you know that you think needs to be interviewed in the local area, area let us know we'll shoot rick over to talk to them and get the interview no one else could you're gonna shoot rick i'm gonna shoot rick and then send his dead body over to that band okay that would be like fedex i guess you know (laughs) once again huge shout out to our boy john nolan thanks for hitting us up on the newsletter holler at us and i've been mikey and i've been (laughs) canon take care This has been a Last Chance Podcast production brought to you by the Last Chance Podcast Network.